start off by base coating all available in skin with Bugman's Glow. This includes their face, ears and exposed arms. Eowyn has a fairer complexion than a lot of her Rohirrim counterparts, so we're going to be bringing up the tone of her skin quicker than we do with standard warriors. Lay out over all the flesh with a 30-70 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. Highlight the skin now with Cadian Flesh Tone. Start focusing on some of the raised areas over her skin, including her forehead, cheekbones, nose, chin, and trying to create some slight muscle definition over her forearm, forearms and between the fingers. Once the wash is dry, highlight the skin with a 60-40 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh. We're adding a bit more Pallid Witch here than normal so as to push that fairer complexion we talked about and give her more of a pale look she has in the two towels. Make sure to leave the glaze in the recesses. At this point we want to stop highlighting her lips, this will give the impression of a little bit of makeup on her face without having to actively apply it ourselves. Continue to add more padded witch flesh to the mix for the next few highlights. Every time you want to draw this towards the more pronounced areas of skin, towards the tip of the nose, outlining the forehead, accentuating the cheekbones and creating more distinction over the individual fingers and musculature over the back of the hands. This will create a natural progression of blending and shadow by leaving the previous layers showing in the recesses. By a final pinpoint dot highlight to the tip of the nose, nostrils, outermost edges of cheekbones and knuckle joints over the hands where the light would hit the most pronounced areas of her facial details. After this is done you can pick out her eyes with a small horizontal line of Abaddon Black with two pinpoint dots of pallid bridge flesh out the side. Be extremely careful here not to leak over onto the rest of the skin as this will bring a lot of character and emotion to the model's face. Base coat Eowyn's hair is still easy and drab. If you want to get an even coverage for this, so you may have to apply this in a few thin coats. Layer her hair by adding a small amount of the messy deserts to the still legion. This will provide a slight richness in colour but won't result in her hair becoming fluorescent yellow when we're finished. Now we have the base colour for the hair. Add some pallid witch flesh into the previous mix and begin blocking out some of the bigger areas, leaving the previous mix showing in the deepest recesses, particularly in areas like her centre parting, around the edges of the braid and creating some differentiation between the top of her head and the hair that cascades down around her shoulders.
continue to add in more pallid witch flesh and start picking out individual strands of hair. You'll probably have to recreate the definition yourself across a scalp as this is more of a smooth surface compared to a defined hair over her shoulders. For the final edge highlight, add more pallid witch flesh into the mix and focus this on the upper areas and tips of the hair. This will accentuate what light would hit through flowing blonde hair. Let's go Eowyn's jerkin with a mix of rhinoxide and dryer bark. Again, the rhinoxide would add a level of richness to the leather which we would not be able to achieve with just dryer bark. Layer the tunic by adding some Gawthor brown to the mix. Once the wash is dry, edge highlight the tunic with pure Gawthor brown. Finally, for the final edge highlight, add a small amount of pallid witch flesh to the Gawthor brown. This will give the upper areas of leather a more dry, weathered, aged look while still maintaining the deep richness in the recesses. Eowyn's dress is one of the most prominent features on the model, but this next segment is quite lengthy, but taking the time to get the highlights right here can really make or break the model, so be sure not to rush this next step. Base coat all of Eowyn's dress with a mix of Thunderhawk glue and Abaddon black. Layer over by adding more Thunderhawk glue to the mix. Try and leave the deepest recesses of the dress still showing underneath. The less deep recesses can still be painted over at this stage.
I like the dress with pure Thunderhawk blue. Now you want to start creating a natural flow of fabric by starting to focus on more of the raised areas of the dress, as well as the upper areas that are being raised. For example, on a right knee which is bent, which will cause more fabric to be exposed to light and therefore needs to be brought up with the Thunderhawk more at this point. Once the glaze is dry, push the highlights further by highlighting with a mix of Thunderhawk blue and Fenrisian grey, again focusing more on the upper and outer folds of the material. Continue to add more Fenrisian grey for the next few highlights or until you're happy with the look. As before, with the hair you may want to apply this in a few thin coats rather than thicker coats to get a smooth blend and transition between the fabric folds. Apply a final edge highlight of pure Fenrisian grey to the upper and lower edges of the previous highlights. Try and keep this as thin as possible to prevent overlapping the previous few layers. Paint Eowyn's sword blade with lead belcher.
I like the edges of the blade with Iron Breaker. Paint the hilt with cigarette crumbs. Once the wash is dry, apply a quick dot highlight of Iron Breaker just to show a hint of light hitting the gold. Thank you for watching Planet Mythical Paints AOM Shield Maiden of Rohan. We really hope you enjoyed the video. If you like our content so far, please hit that like button and subscribe for a ton more future content which is still to come. We have big plans for this channel and every little bit of support helps hugely. Thank you again and we'll see you in the next video.